Okay, let's look at classifying our building by major occupancy. Uh, so I'm in uh, Volume 1, Division B, Part 3, Section 3.1, 3.12. Um, so classification of buildings or parts of buildings by major occupancy. So really all this is is just identifying what is the intended use or uses in the building, and then those use and uses are, become the major occupancies of the building. Uh, the code then takes those major occupancies and classifies them into a letter and number category of groups and divisions, which we'll take a look at. So, you know, if you're looking at this, you're like, well, what is major occupancy? Of course, don't forget, you could always go to the definition here. And in this definition, you'll see there's a bunch of um, letters and, and numbers here, which I'm going to get into this stuff uh, elsewhere in the code here. Um, so on the second page here, here's these groups and or here, here are these letters and numbers again. So there's there's only this many groups in the code, basically. So your your uses in your building will fall into one of these, basically. So your A groups are assembly type um, uses, basically. And depending on the nature of that assembly use, uh, it'll fall into a certain division, basically. Uh, your Bs are treatment, occupancies, and prisons, and things like that. Cs are your residential, so condos and apartments. Ds are business and personal services, so like an office would fall into that one. And your E group is uh, mercantile. And again, you can go to definitions if you don't know what that means. Um, but basically, it's retail. And, um, and then there's some industrial uh, groups and divisions as well. So just back up a little bit here. If you're like, well, I don't, I'm not too sure what my use is for my building. If we go back one here, there's um, there's a list in the appendix right here. So you just click on that, and it lists all the groups and divisions, and then lists uses under them. So for example, so Group A, Division One, includes opera houses and motion picture theaters, and so on and so forth. And you know, obviously, you're not going to find every use in here. Um, you will find most of them. If you can't find a use that you have in your building, you just you kind of look at the slate of uses in that group or division, and then you can usually slide your, um, you know, with good with good comparison, you can slide your use into one of these groups or divisions that seem to fit um, for your purpose. So again, if we look at Group E, that's uh, like supermarkets and uh, retail stores, for example. Okay, so that's really um, all you're doing is just figuring out what groups you have in your building. Once you figure out the groups in your building, uh, then when you move forward through this section, you'll see um, a chart here. And this chart just tells you now the required fire separations between major occupancies. So let's just look at a couple of examples here. Um, so, you know, a very common situation is to have, this is the thing we were looking at a building in section. It's very common to have, say, um, a building with, um, you know, retail on the main floor, let's say. And then on the upper floors, you might have residential, which would be, which would be C groups, and the retail would be an E group. So this build, the major occupancies of this building would be group E and group C. Uh, likewise, if we look at a building in plan view, like a strip mall situation maybe, and maybe there's three units in there, and let's just say the, the end unit is a, a restaurant, so that would be an A2, uh, retail space would be an E, and maybe the end one's a dentist, so a D use. So the major occupancies in that building are A2, E, and D. And that's what that chart basically is for. It's just telling you right off the bat, okay, well, if you have a group D, what did I have there? Actually, let's look at the E. We, uh, a group E beside a A2, uh, where is it, A2 right here, then um, right away we can see that those major occupancies have to be separated by a two-hour fire separation. Uh, so that, that's really all that is. Um, it's just it's just a first check, like, you know, if, if um, for example, you have, uh, let me think if I can find one here. So if you have a D use to an E use, it says there's no fire separation there, but 
there may be one elsewhere in the code. So this is really just a, a first step to, um, you know, seeing, identifying what your major occupancies are and, and figuring out some, some fire separations between those major occupancies. Um, but again, later on, um, you know, we will use those major occupancies based with on a bunch of other parameters of your building, um, you know, major occupancy being one of them, the type of uses, um, but also the building height and building area and how many streets it faces and so on and so forth. You'll start to figure out what are the construction requirements of this building. Um, and then also, you know, even though something here might show that there's no fire rating between um, uses, there's another section in the code separation of suites that might um, tell us otherwise. So there may be a fire separation required, but it's just from a major occupancy standpoint, um, it is not. If you get this little, I can't highlight that, the little dash there just means no fire rating. And of course, if you end up on one that's got a little note beside it, you got to read it and see what it says. Anyways, that's really it. Just classifying uh, your building for what the uses are, and then again, we'll that'll we'll be using that information um, as we make our way through the code. And just you know, another thing that uh, comes to mind with your groups is that'll determine um, that that'll help you determine occupant loads basically um, to figure out how many washrooms you need and how how wide your exit's got to be and all kinds of stuff, basically. So this is kind of a first step is um, identifying your major occupancies.